record button. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Hi, everybody. And everybody who's here today knows who I am. I don't need to, for you to introduce yourselves, but there's Linda. Okay, so there's two things that I want to get to today. Um, one is we're going to throw out the idea of multiple themes. And that's the most important one. The other one is once you do install what we're going to talk about, in WordPress, you need to be careful because whatever page builder that you use, that's fine for the pages that are already built. If you install a new page builder, you cannot use that on pages already built in WordPress. It just destroys everything that was done to that page. I'm sure that Sue Ellen knows that, but I think <laughs> Kevin's on Joomla, so he's not concerned now. But anybody else, you have to remember to <clears throat> use the page builder tool, whatever it is that you're using to build pages. If you already built a page using one page builder, don't use another one on that page, but you can create new pages with another page builder. And that is the part that we're going to go over today so you can see what you need to do to create your buyer's journey template. So I will begin, instead of just talking, I'm going to show. If I can find the right buttons because I don't know how to do this very well. Um, Let's go to get this bar out of the way. Zoom. I need to make that thing in a, a transparent background. Okay, I'm going to my handy dandy temporary or uh, playing test site. Okay, so you can see on this thing, there are no links to anything other than pages that you can read even to the puppy page, privacy policy, home, but you're not going to get to the buyer's journey pages. Don't put them in your menu. I wanted to make sure that everybody understands that. Don't put the buyer's journey pages in your menu. Okay, so here's the page, the awareness example page. And you can see there is there are no links, no way to get to the website. So the only thing the buyer knows to do is just read this page. So let me do one more thing. Log into this thing. When you are and I'll go back to here. You can look that while I'm logging in. I want you to read those instructions because that's really what you need to do. You're going to install Elementor. Now, if you have some other preference, then let's chat about it. But I am suggesting to use the free version of Elementor because it's easy, it works well, and it's a good page builder. Let's see, we have had a few more people show up other than the developers. Anybody here is not. Well, we got Bonnie. So Bonnie, are you considering going to do some work on your own in here? If you are, you need to install Elementor. I I don't expect to do any work on my website like that. Okay. I don't think I'm. You know, well, years ago you, in the '90s, I was doing coding. You know that. that you're doing uh, buyer journey pages. Excuse me. The when you're doing buyer's journey pages, you need a different template than the one that's in your site. Period. Oh, so I would have to use a different template. 
And is that Elementor? We actually went through that last week and it was uh, highly recommended to use a plugin that allows you to do multiple themes. We are going to erase that idea. Don't do that. It turns out that that plugin is really complicated. Plus the fact that it hasn't been updated in the last several months, plus the fact mm -hmm. that WordPress is moving to throw that one out altogether. So too many things came up after we found something that would work. So yes, what will work is installing Elementor. So whether you're uh, doing the, tip, the work on your site yourself or you've got a developer, even the developers may or may not know this little trick. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to plugins, installed, and add new plugin and type in Elementor. Now there are several versions of Elementor. You just want the simple free version. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. You don't need them. You just want the basic Elementor. And it's the first one that pops up and mine is ready to go already, but all you have to do is click on the install now, then activate it, and you're done installing Elementor. Even if you've got another page builder, you can do this. Whether you've got WP Bakery, Divi, whatever it is that you use, you can install WordPress, or excuse me, you can install Elementor into your WordPress environment so that you can deal with the buyer's journey pages and eliminate any of the stuff on the page. Does that make sense so far, Bonnie? I think I'm too tired. Pardon? I think I'm too tired. Too tired to follow I'm along with the bouncy not ball? Computing. I'm not computing. So, I'm getting the gist of it, but I'm not really getting everything. Well, since we're recording this, and I do have the instructions on this awareness page, uh, I was hoping that there would be more people before I put the link in, because I want everybody to have this link so you can see the instructions. And it's pretty simple, really. So the instructions are in chat. You can use that link. But the idea, like I said, is just install Elementor. And once you've done that, as I've done, you can go, you can create a new page. In this instance, I'm going to edit my awareness page. In fact, I'll just create a new one. This will be the consideration page. And I'm going to make sure that I edit with Elementor. And there's a good reason for that. Okay, so here's the consideration page. Let's see if I can do this again. Down here in settings, in the bottom left, click on the little gear that says settings. And then you've got all this stuff at the top. Down here at the bottom, see where it says page layout. Instead of default, you click on Elementor Canvas. Look at that. It's all ready to go. You can so do it takes you out. Want. Sorry, go ahead. It so it takes out your header and everything. Everything this is, is just, gone. What is you see fine. right now is what happens here. Okay. This is exactly what you came out with. You can type to your heart's content. You can put a title in there. You do whatever you want to the page. You can add images. You still have the ability to do that over here on the side, whatever image that you want. So everything that you wanted to do to this page, you can do. And everything you do not want on the page is gone. It's just a blank page. It's perfect for the buyer's journey process. Then I'm going to publish this. 
And now I'm going to get out of Elementor just so we can see the page. It's in there just like anything else, so you can edit it with Elementor, just like you would edit any other page. You can put whatever kind of container. You can make it look like whatever you want. For the buyer's journey, you can just make it a typical container. And then you're going to add text. And you type in whatever you like. Click on the little edit icon. And then over here on the left is your text. And if you want to center it, you can do all kinds of whatever that you would normally do with your editor. You can do all of that. You can even make it bold, underline, whatever. So you have the ability to do whatever, update that. Now you have your page break. It's pretty darn simple. Any questions on that? Can you do one? Sorry, what was that? Do one. Put the type in and uh, work it up. I was only catching half that. Try it again. Can you actually go through with a whole page so we see what it looks like afterwards? Oh, you want me to create the entire page? Yeah. How about if we just look at the one that I already did that's got all the text in it? And that's the one that's got the instructions on the front. That's this page. If you wanted to change the background, if you wanted to add pictures, you still have all that option, all those options. There's something that's not quite set and right with you, Bonnie? No, I just, I like, I like it when somebody does everything. But I guess I wrote it also down. Well, so. the buyer journey pages, you're not going to add a bunch of stuff. You might throw a couple of images in. Other than that, it is, should be just text. Okay. You, your only links are going to be from one of the buyer's journey pages to the next. And then up, you'll have the uh, buy now or call now or whatever action that you want at the bottom of the page that links to the, your action page. Linda, go ahead. Hi, Tom. Um, I have a question. Um, I've only ever done buyer journeys in the past from email campaigns. And um, I guess if I'm understanding what you're doing here, this is, of course, they're, they're pages that are, you know, really not visible in my normal website. And I, I guess I understand using Elementor, what it does, it strips out all the necessary headers and all that stuff. But I can have, because people are going to come here. I'm just wondering, because I normally create pages on my re WordPress website to link to my, from my email campaigns. Um, but... I don't normally do buyer journeys in, in, in this, in my business that I'm doing now. So, um, and so I, you're, why do I have to do it this way with Elementor? I guess I'm, the buyer's, that journey, just... the buyer's journey pages in your website should have absolutely no links, no header, no way to be able to get to any other pages of your website, period. Is that part understood? I guess so, yes. But I thought in the buyer journey pages, you always had links to, if they did want to purchase, let's say in the consideration phase, or they did want to go to my website to see other things, they could. So there would be links there, but you're saying there, there wouldn't be links here. You can link to the other buyer journey pages, but mm -hmm. you 
can you do not want to link to any place else in your website except for into apparently you don't have this thing and i'm going to send that through chat um except what action they're going to take so yeah what do you have your uh people doing are they calling are they buying something in specific what's your action that you yeah want? to contact us for a quote okay. or uh so you then, know, uh, so then consultation. You, so then you would want to add mm -hmm. a uh, link to the mm -hmm. contact form mm -hmm. or the contact mm -hmm. page. That's your I do. now called I do. action page. Yeah, I do. And Currently now. So are you expecting people to just search on whatever your the buyer awareness is for of your products or whatever? There's you know many many different pages you can have, of course, uh, for these buyer journeys for different products or different you know flavors of the products um and you're you know so through search you know and you know internet website searches they would find you and then find these pages or are, they, are you being directed to these pages no uh, how you're you're expecting your buyer's journey pages if they're done correctly they should be targeting local searches mm -hmm. okay and if that's the case and if they're done correctly depending okay. if they're uh, created properly and Google likes them, they're going to get a good position in the local search results. So yes, okay. people will click on that buyer journey page to get to your site. They will only be able to go through the buyer journey pages mm -hmm. yep. until they take action. And if you look at the, uh, uh, I, the image that I put into chat, Mm -hmm. You'll see that's the basics of how you want to set up all buyer journey pages. Okay, it's a set of yeah. three. Each is uh, linked to the next, but not back. And then the only other way that they are linked is to the action page. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay. It does. It's the only thing that they were designed to do. Now, you said that you're doing some other things with uh, buyer journey pages. I don't know what that is, but this is what Google's asking every website to do. Instead of concentrating on your SEO, you're now concentrating on the buyer journey pages. Because as we all know, you go and you do a search, you click on the, one of the uh, top listings and you get there, they're not answering anything that you wanted to have answered. They're not answering your question. It's not the information that you expected from the search that you had. So it's not related. And those top uh, results are getting pushed out. It's going to take a while for Google to do it, but they're getting pushed out because they're not providing the information that, that uh, searchers are looking for. And that's this whole part about the buyer's journey from Google create pages that do explain what somebody's searching and th then link that to your action page of your website. But you want to go through the whole buyer's journey process, the awareness, consideration, the decision, and make sure that people can get that information and make it great information so they stay on the page and read all of them. And if the time that by the time that they get to your action page, which that page will be one of your main template, main theme. So all the menu items are there, all the links, everything is there. If the buyer wants to leave and go to another page, that's their prerogative. Or they can do what you've just set them up to do and call or buy if that's what you're having them do. But you definitely want to make sure that you don't have links to anything. Now, I'm not sure if that's contrary to what you've been doing for your other stuff, but this is how Google wants you to set it up. And if you could have a, an A++ with all your SEO on your pages and Google saying, I don't care. If you don't have the buyer's journey, it's not going to matter that you have the best SEO on all of your pages. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I mean, it's 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 for SEO purposes. It, it so that's that's where I was a little confused because in 
normal marketing, when I do email marketing or social marketing or whatever, I do, you know, if somebody does, because you have automated streams. So if, if somebody does click on something that they're interested, in, then you send them another email, that kind of a thing. But this is more for from the standpoint of searches for, you know, if they're going to font, they're looking for specific information and you have it here yes. for them to, to gobble it up, you know behind the scenes yeah i i get that now i didn't realize when did that happen when did google start changing that it's e-e-a-t and i'll put that in chat too so you can go uh you can look that up in google and it will give you a ton of information but the Reader's Digest version of all that information is this is where Google is putting the importance of what you need in your site now. And it's been about a year, a little over a year since they've implemented it. So it's still going to be a while before they push a lot of these top of the uh, search results sites out of there because they're not providing anything. And that's where we're all going. So if Google is saying we don't know enough or we're not writing it enough in pages, in the content, they want these buyer journey pages. So it, it goes deeper into we all feel that we know our business well enough that we can write pages better than AI. And I'm going to follow that up by saying, no, you don't. Who has, which party, you or AI, has access to more information? Anybody want to answer that one? <laughs> Linda? AI? I use it every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every day. Okay, now there's another reason that you want AI to write your pages. Instead of just the fact that it knows more than we do, because it's got the access to all that information, it can literally write it better and make it. And if it doesn't come out the way that you feel is easiest for readers to read that information, you can regenerate the page in seconds and ask it to make it easier to read. Maury, go ahead. I was just going to say what, AI offers that we can't, when we write our own content, we view it from our own lens and fall in love with it. Right. Mm -hmm. AI writes from, a, you can tell AI to write from the perspective of the prospects and the lens they're looking through. Mm -hmm. It has more perspective than you do about what the user might like. Does that make sense? Because I know we're selfish creatures. We want to like what we write. Well, that doesn't mean other people are going to like it. That's the biggest part. If you decide, okay, I, I'm going to write my pages. I don't need AI. That's a mistake. I, and no matter who you are, or how much you know about your business. If you don't use AI, you're doing a disservice to everybody else because go to any website. What's the first, if you just give it an overall look at whatever page that you arrive on, it's, I won these awards or I'm the best at this and read my stuff because I can do it better than anybody else. Oh my God. Could you just answer my question? That's all we want. Provide the information that I did, I asked in the search engine that I'm not getting here. That's what I want. We've all done it over and over again and it's getting worse and worse all the time so not getting the information from the top search results is why buyer's journey is here put those buyer's journey pages into your site and have ai do it so ai doesn't give a rusty rat's pajamas about how many awards you won or how many testimonials you've had or all that different stuff you that doesn't matter to the person typing in a question or looking for information in the search engine. Testimonials and badges and awards, and that has nothing to do with what I'm searching. If I wanted to search for how many testimonials on a particular page or a particular business, 
I'd have typed that in. Linda, you Can I ask else? another question, Tom? Sure. Okay. Regarding that about um, using Elementor. Um, normally when I write a page on my WordPress site, uh, I, you know, have the SEO and readability uh, Yoast, um, you know, information that, mm -hmm. will I have that on with, does it matter on this? You will, but you, you're, you want good SEO on the buyer's journey pages, but you don't want anything else on there other than content. You make the page look nice, just have absolutely no way that they can go anywhere or do anything. No pop-ups, no drop-ins, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It's just information and a page that looks palatable. You could have a couple of images in there that are relevant to whatever's on the page. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to say, here's the answer to whatever you searched in Google. Okay. It's like Kevin does VOIP phone services, packages. So if somebody says, well, what is VOIP? Great. So Kevin's got a page that in his buyer journey, what is VOIP? That's going to specifically answer that question. Maury, go ahead. Your mic's off. I'll give you another really good example of that. When you walk into a department store and that happy, bouncy, smiling clerk comes rushing up to you and says, can I help you? What do you usually say? No, thank you, right? Because you haven't had time to look around. So if someone's dropping into your site from a perspective of, I don't know what my problem is, I'm just researching to find out what I might need, and you're instantly slamming them with buy this, buy this, buy this, you're that happy, bouncing sales clerk asking the person that just entered the store, can I help you? And that's what Thomas is trying to say is don't be that person. Right. You all, I, I guess I should say it is we all, we switch gears for whatever reason in our minds when we're say, saying, okay, we're going to write a page or write pages. When we're writing content for our website, we seem to forget what we find all the time on other websites. So we start going, well, the competition doesn't like this, so I'm going to put, that's wrong. When you search keyword terms in the keyword planner or wherever you're searching, look for what people are actually searching. If you're making up things going, yes, but I know this information is something that people really want. Don't do that. Make it something that you know people are searching and make it local. Did I hang on that long enough? If you try to compete in a national for whatever, whether it's buyer's journey pages or any other page, you have a long road to hoe. Local search can be, if you do the page right, it can take just a week to three weeks to appear in a local search. Well, that's a whole lot better than anywhere from two months to six months in SEO. So there's a lot of advantage to using buyer's journey instead of concentrating and, and the expense of SEO. Not that you don't need SEO, you do, but you can now get away with basics, title, uh, description, heading tags, making sure that you have the proper density. But now you have more room, if you will, to create a good page for buyer journey. Each of the three pages, each of them should be good. And I had somebody tell me that they're going to write pages. And I thought, well, I need to get back to that person. They're not here in the meeting. Linda, this might be good for you to hear too. <clears throat> if you have written pages and you are sure that the pages you've written are as good or better than AI, let AI read them. Linda, are you familiar with having AI read your pages? 
not at all. I do I just copy and paste the whole thing in the message? Oh, very good. Wow, very good. Because I was just thinking, Tom, I have so much old, old content on my because this is my third website redone. I have but a lot of content that hasn't really changed, but it needs to be, you know, updated, beefed yes. up a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. And I'm thinking, wow, I could probably, that's a great idea. I could use that to, to, to re revise this, this content. Now yeah. for you in particular, Linda, when, when you're talking to AI, you need to warm up with AI. And I'm smiling because we've used so many different terms for this. The bottom line is you want to have a, a conversation. It doesn't have to be really long, but you want to have some kind of a conversation. Invite AI to dinner and a movie. Whatever it is, you're trying to warm up AI so it understands the type of information that you're looking for. And then you can ask it to write um, the pages that you're looking for. Now, I was going to add this file that I created. Here we go. I changed the name of this. Uh, it's not singling out Kevin. Okay, everybody should see I just uploaded a file. Now, <clears throat> if you just use that, and you could even just change the subject and then change the prompts very minimally, as you're going down, I've in the uh, in all of the information I've written. Here's the prompt, and a prompt is what are you asking AI to do, or telling it to do? That's a prompt. So the prompts are in there to show you what was used, what prompt was used to get whatever information you're reading. You're going to find it's pretty lighthearted in some areas. That's a great thing to do with AI. Not on your website, though. Right, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what it says. A VoIP phone should not be, you know, equated to a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the only one who had that issue. The one that I created doesn't. Um, prompting AI is a really important part. So, Linda, when we talked about feeding those articles back into AI, you're going to prompt it first by asking, first of all, warm it up, get it to understand what subject you're talking about, and stay on that one subject. Don't move to another one in the same screen. Start a new AI chat with okay. each different subject. Okay. And it saves everything over on the left side. You, I, I've been using BART. I've been real happy with it. But you can use ChatGPT, whichever one floats your boat. You know, it's interesting because I do use both of them just to see how they compare. And then mm -hmm. sometimes I will take bits and pieces from each of them and create my own page mm -hmm. for content that way. Um, but, you know, a lot of these older pieces of information and content that I have, you know, that's we carried over from website to website and uh, they're, they're not, you know, they're not accessible. They're still in draft mode now uh, on my new site. But, um, you know, I was thinking that, you know, I think this would, it, this is a great way to update that information. I thought it might be too basic, but for the buyer oh, journey, no. it's, it's perfect. Yes. Yes. And when you're doing the buyer's journey pages, and stick with just one subject per conversation with AI, you get it warmed up, and then you need that prompt in there after it's warmed up to say, is this a good article for the awareness stage of the buyer's journey? 
And you can use that prompt again for each of the stages. The only thing you need to change is awareness changes to consideration. Mm -hmm. By doing that, AI is going to read what you have and tell you whether it's a an article of value for your uh, buyer's journey, or it's going to tell you that it's way off base. All right. That's so okay. Great. you're going to, you're going to get an honest answer from AI to see, is this page I wrote for the buyer's journey good for this stage? Mm -hmm. So if you're just writing it for the other pages in your website, you wouldn't ask it if it's good for the uh, buyer journey pages. But you will have a particular topic that the page is about. And you can go through several prompts to ask AI if it's good for whatever. I have no idea what specific thing that you're trying to do with any particular article. But asking AI how good is it for blah, 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 blah is great because it comes back and says, well, you can improve it by doing this. Or, oh, it's almost perfect if you just have blah, blah. So there's all kinds of things that you can do that, uh, do with AI. Uh, Chris is asking for the link to the research tool um, for the keyword search tool. And while I'm doing that, Kevin, go ahead. Well, I put it in the chat. Um, those are the statements that I use. Um, evaluate the following article. Does it encompass a single stage of the buyer's journey? Because some of the stuff that AI has written for me, I I read it and, and it just didn't sit well with me. So I immediately fed it back in to AI and said, you know, that statement, evaluate the following article. Does it encompass a single stage of the buyer's journey? Now I asked it for a specific stage. And when it responded, it said, no, it, it encompasses all three. So AI sometimes will elaborate a little bit too much and encompass all three stages of the buyer's journey at times. So you've got to watch what is coming out of AI also. And don't forget your AI disclaimer, Tom. <laughs> The bottom line for anything that you're doing with AI is it's going to write it well, but you do want to read it before you decide, okay, I'm just, don't just say, I'm going to take everything that it spits out and slap it in my side. I'm done. You've got to read it so you can see, is this palatable for a general audience? What's the, uh, uh, not looking for a score, but the general age range that you should be shooting for is somewhere around uh, 12th grade level. If you're going above that, it's going to be difficult for a lot of people to read. So don't go above that. We answering more questions for you there, Linda? I don't know. I guess because a lot of that older content I have was written just for kind of for SEO. You know, this is going back for 10 to 14 years. But it's all the same questions that any new person searching for my products would be asking. So I this is a tool that can really expand upon that and really create now. At least I have I have the the keyword, you know, the the content topics that people were probably going to search for, now I can create a buyer's journey out of it by asking AI to do that. And I think this is this is great. And That'll give me a lot more content than I have. I was thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do all this? And it will also tell you whether it's a value. If it says, well, it's got right. all three, just like Kevin had, it's got all three stages in it, and then you need to tear it apart. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do have another question for you regarding sure. um, SEO and so forth. Um, you know, a lot of times, this is where I get a little bit tripped up when I create my pages. And this is going to be maybe not true for the awareness. So I'm taking up time here. We can hold it off for another time. But, um, you know, it says sometimes you don't have a lot of outbound links on your page. Or you don't have any. I mean, so then I've got to come up with an outbound link. 
I mean, you sometimes I forget it if it's, you know, in the orange or the green shade on my WordPress site, so I'm okay. But um, if I really want to add one, I mean, what what is your take on that? Because, you know, it's like, you know, I'm certainly not going to send them to my competition. <laughs> but what do I, I mean, how, 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 how much of an outbound link do I need to put in there? I mean, is it content that's, you know, similar or just maybe more design oriented? Because my products are, you know, hardscape products, you know, for pool decks, patios, and everything like that. So, what would your what would be your take on that? For my this take, kind of stuff. My take on uh, links, either in or out, you need to be careful. I would concentrate a lot. And you'll find a lot of people tell you, "Oh, you got to have this many backlinks. Oh, you got to have links going out to back the truck up." It's not easy mm -hmm. to get high quality links either direction. If you're right. sending people, if you're if you have a link that's sending people away from your site, you better make sure that you put the code in that link so that Google doesn't follow it because you're sending somebody away from your site. Only do that if it's absolutely necessary. And if it is, that content better be good at the other end. If not, make sure that Google has the code in, uh, that you put the code in the link so that Google doesn't follow it. Okay. Because if the site is of no value and you linked to it, you're yeah. going to get points off. And the same with links coming to you. If you're selling shoes and it's a mom and pop place, yeah, but I got three stores. Nike still doesn't care, do they? But the Nike guys are the, that's where I want to link from if I've got a shoe store. How are you going to get that? Maybe you can get it from somebody who's next step down. Maybe, um, I'm trying to think of somebody else, maybe some other shoe manufacturer who's not quite as big would say, oh yeah, I'd link to you. But the bottom line for backlinks, the pages need to have authority. So whatever site that's coming from needs to have authority in order to give you authority. If they don't have authority, it, forget linking from them and certainly not to them. So Thanks. my whole spin is I've always been reluctant to ask people for backlinks or to give a link to somebody. I concentrate on the SEO and my own site, concentrate on the uh, information that I'm providing, trying to give people what they want in the site. And I'm just as guilty as a lot of people. I've got to go through and get my buyer journey pages in and update a lot of my pages, even though the site is not really old. But it's just different the way that we are looking for information today than it was 20 years ago. In the early 2000s, we could slap pretty much anything in there and nobody had a clue what they were doing anyway. That was fine. Now the competition is so stiff. It's, you know, it's like, uh, kind of sounds silly. Maury's probably going to laugh at this. It's like racing, a uh, car racing. You race a car and you win. Okay, that car was fast today. What about in a couple of weeks? Because that guy that you just beat's going back to the shop and he's going to make his car faster. And that continues to happen every week. Yeah, well, he upgraded his car. Well, now you've got to go upgrade yours so it's faster and it can beat the competition. That's uh, something that's constantly going on. And right now, it's buyer's journey is what's going to make your website faster. It's going to attract the traffic if the pages are there. Kevin, go ahead. I, I really don't know how to ask this question, Tom, and I sure as heck don't want to send the rest of the group down a spiraling rabbit hole. But is if you're still trying to do SEO for your website pages, and somebody goes to your website based on your SEO, Aren't you going to be dinged by Google because it's not a buyer's journey page? No.
if the if the page was seen by Google as having good information, then they're going to leave it at the top if that's in fact what it has done. Let's take, for example, your homepage. Google has found time and time again, they like the information on that page. And contrary to popular belief, you have a homepage that's in a number one position for local searches. Doesn't usually happen. Homepages are usually several different topics, so it doesn't work. Yours is about one topic, it's about VOIP. It may be different things. It's not like the buyer's journey page saying it's all one part, like the awareness or consideration or the decision page. But the fact that it's providing information people are searching and it comes up, then that's fine. Okay. If you also have buyer's journey pages, then Google is going to know that too. Say, well, this is a good page, even though it's not buyer's journey. And these are good buyer's journey pages. So you get more authority because all of that comes together. Thank you. You betcha. I want to address Chris had the keyword planner. Did you understand that you, anybody can get into the keyword planner and use it for free? There is the, well, you need to give us a credit card to complete the account creation. And that's because Google is hoping that you're going to say, we want to do an ad campaign. You do an ad campaign, you go to the keyword planner and you set up the campaign in there. So that's what it's originally designed to be used for. But people like me, and I've taught a lot of people, just use the keyword planner to find keyword terms. Don't worry about an ad. Um, any other questions? Something I said at the top of the meeting, I want to make sure I'm going to say it again. Installing more than one page builder in WordPress means you need to choose one to edit. If they are pre-existing, if, if you installed Elementor today and you have used something else, could be Divi, whatever it is. You used to use Divi. You'd use Divi to create the entire site and all the pages you have. Now you're bringing in Elementor to write the buyer's journey pages. Do not attempt to edit the previous pages created by Divi or any other page builder. You're going to install Elementor only for new pages. If they were created with Elementor, you can edit it with Elementor. If it was created with Divi or WP Bakery or I've lost it, all the different ones that are out there. But if it was created with something else, you've got to use the something else to edit that page. Whatever page builder created the page must remain with that page builder. Sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but I know that hmm. WordPress can be very confusing. And I've said, install Elementor no matter what you have. And Elementor is going to create your buyer's journey pages for you because it can strip out all the stuff. So doing that is fine. Just don't attempt to use Elementor on other older pages that have already been built. Did I give you a headache, Kevin? Every time we talk. <laughs> I thought you were going to be nice today and say, no, I don't have one. Oh, well, good. I actually talked and you didn't have a headache today. No, I was actually looking for the Accenture bottle. Just to... <laughs> 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 Sorry, my friend. I can't win. <laughs> okay. So for the couple of new people who are here, what questions do you have? Because there's, this subject is loaded with things. Chris, S, Mark. Any questions? 
Nothing. I will put myself okay. out there. Okay. Um, I use Elementor all the time. Mm -hmm. So if anybody gets lost on any of this, just holler because I build in Elementor a lot. So if it's a good choice. Need... It, it's a good choice. And so many developers will use Divi or WP Bakery or whatever it is. And then when they hand it off to the client or they part ways for whatever reason, they're stuck and they can't use yeah. the stuff that's installed. They can't edit it with anything else. They don't have the key, the, uh, uh, what's the license key right. to be able to use the thing. So they're dead in the water. It's almost yeah. like developers today, a lot of them in WordPress, they do that in per on purpose. They go, yeah, I got my money and I'm gone. Now you can't do anything to your site. Well, what value is that to your customer? Yeah, I hand off a lot of sites. And that's one of the reasons that I use Elementor because in a in a 20 minute instruction, they can go in and change their text and change their address and, and not be stuck. Um, yeah. So... Linda, did you have a question on that? Yeah, but I, this is, I, I didn't think about it before, but if I download uh, Elementor, I'm planning on it, onto my site, I use for my normal pages and normal, you know, like email content and stuff I need to write for posts and pages. Mm -hmm. I use just the basic WordPress block editors that they have, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, will I have a problem then with so do I have yeah. to, how do I pick using Elementor now? I'm not sure. When you install Elementor, you, every page that you go to, let me share my screen here. Every page that you go to in your site mm -hmm. tells you what it knows is installed so you have the choice to edit with whichever that you wish. Oh. If you created pages with Gutenberg, then use G Gutenberg. Actually, I don't even know the editor I have. I mean, it just came with my site. Which it's, is prob <clears throat> it's probably your block editor, but if you look under each mm -hmm. one of these pages, it says edit block editor, edit classic edition, that might be what you have. Oh. And then edit with Elementor. You just click on whichever one you used. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah right. I use classic and block. So, okay. I get okay. it now. So, okay. So any, any new pages that you build with Elementor, you just have to remember which ones are which. And that's probably only going to be your buyer's journey pages. Right. That's what I'm planning right now. My yeah. question though to Tom also is... Um, what for getting started with this buyer journey, um, SEO, Google stuff, um, should I, how, how many pages should we look or how many buyer's journeys should we really start doing? I mean, should we target maybe doing 10 of them or I guess it depends on your keywords and stuff, but you know, how many you would do or what people are searching on, but what would you recommend? First of all, the buyer's journey pages are in groups of three. So uh -huh. no matter how, what kind of action you're telling people that you want them to take, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you need all three pages, the awareness, consideration, and purchase right, <clears throat> or decision stage, whichever you want to call it, but you need all three. So it's a group of three pages. You can, I, I call that one set. You right. can create up to nine sets, right, Maury, before you get into a, a situation but it depends on how much competition it, there is. If there's very little competition, one set should be fine. You could do two or three sets, each of them on a different uh, topic that mm -hmm. is related to your site. So start with one set and you can do several sets that are on different topics because you, if you've got a big site, you want to mm -hmm. kind of uh, target a bunch of different things that, you know, people are searching. It all has to do with uh, how much competition there is, because the competition, if they've got 
Well, I, I said nine, but it depends on for each term. In other words, if you have something related to uh, the question, what is VOIP? You could have VOIP phone system has hardware, it's got other software, it's got packages. So those are a lot of different topics you can talk about. But if you're staying on one topic, but several questions around that, <clears throat> you want to go up to as many as nine sets. But I just do maybe one or two on each topic so that you can get an idea of what the competition is doing and then move on to another one and have two or three sets for something completely different. Does that make sense? I think so. No? Um, I think it does. Give me, an, exa give me an example well. of uh, what you think somebody would search for finding something in, that you have in your site. Well, there's one that's been coming up lately because I asked these people that contact us, you know, everybody asks, you know, well, how did you find us? And, um, you know, there is one that's um, for this, a stone that's called bluestone. And it, uh, so people have been searching on bluestone alternatives because they know that bluestone gets very hot. So I've written a lot of content videos and other things on bluestone alternatives. So I think what I'm going to do, and I've but it hasn't been the buyer journey. So I think I'm going to start with that because that's a search argument I know people are looking for and they're finding us. I mean, nationwide, this is kind of one of these things that I've gotten calls from all over the country because it is one of those specific things. The specific people are looking for something very specific. Okay. So that's what I'm going to write first. So but if you said... If you had uh, one, which is what is blue stone? Now you have one group of three. What is group? What is blue stone? That's your awareness page, and then you go into the consideration and decision page about that's one part of blue stone. Then, what are some alternatives to blue stone? Would be another set, okay, still related to that blue stone. Mm-hmm and whatever other topics about bluestone right maybe can you turn it upside down that would be a third set not that you can but maybe you can yeah i have enough about you know some of more technical properties because a lot of the people that contact us are architects and contractors and stuff so those are the ones that are really want to learn more about the products that we have if it's suited for the application they have. So okay. it does get a bit more technical. So that would be the third, I think that would be yep. good. Yep, okay. you can get into technical stuff all you want. You can make yeah. buyer's journey pages about whatever that you wish. Got it. Just make sure that you don't go too many deep. In other words, I, I suggested too deep mm -hmm. or the blue stone. Mm -hmm. You could go as many as nine deep. So nine different sets all about blue stone. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to move to a different topic, you start with a single, then you decide. Right. So you could have nine over here, two over here, and three over on another one. So you're, it's not limited to the number of sets of pages total. You're limited per topic. Okay. Because if you get too much, Google is going to say you're, that's kind of like uh, keyword stuffing. Okay. No. Never but, you know, two term. or three, maybe four different things about the blue stone. You should be mm -hmm. able to cover that without any problem. Okay. All right. Then I'll try that. Now, Thank you. I, I want to also stress, I know you're national, but if you're looking for new traffic, increasing traffic, your results in local searches are going to be much easier to get than they are in national. It could be months before you come up in national. Could be as many as three weeks in local, which means it could be less than three weeks. But I've seen them come up in a couple of days. Just depends on how well the pages are written. And yeah, the competition is for that particular Good search. as anything. <laughs> 
Local <laughs> is very, very simple. So if you're writing your pages, your especially your buyer's journey pages for local searches, include the territory where you want that to appear. If you live on the West Coast and you want to target someplace on the East Coast, you don't have to go national. Pick a city on the East Coast. New Jersey. Okay, so make it local to New Jersey so that comes up for the people in New Jersey. Does that make sense? It does. Um, I guess I couldn't. Um, so I would have to replicate those pages and put like a couple different. Hmm, from, well, that's where I get a little confused. If you're replicating, that's going to get you into trouble. Yeah, so right. Do that. Right. Okay, I'll just but try it you, locally. You can just say, well, I want to have uh, an article because I do a lot of business in that particular city even though you're on the opposite side of the country, that's fine. You can target that article or that set of buyer's journey or any other article to that locality. Just because you're in Bellingham, Washington, doesn't mean that all your pages have to be for Bellingham, Washington. Maybe I could, I, I can do some for New Jersey or somewhere in Texas. That's a local small city and have the pages come up there. So there are different ways that you can use local to actually be national. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Any other questions? I hope we went over enough and enough time so that everybody has a good idea of what to do with the uh, buyer's journey pages and how to strip stuff out. Well, okay then. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. I was trying to think what. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank You're you. You're welcome, Linda. You're very welcome. Have a good week. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> Kevin, are you going to wish me a happy Valentine's Day just to cheer me up? Valentine's Day. I thought that was me showing up. Thank, thank you, Bonnie. No. Kevin, you, is you, your you Valentine. Me gives me a headache. <laughs> just, just, just the opposite. Huh, Thomas? <laughs>